There's one other college football game that I wanted to talk about. Now, nothing disgusts me more than to talk about teams that I absolutely despise and that I detest. USC, who I just had to talk about and compliment because I'm a UCLA guy, and Michigan and Ohio State because I went to Wisconsin. And historically, we have had a lot of shortcomings against those two programs athletically, purely from an athletic standpoint. I hate those schools. But, but, I'd be remiss in my duties as an honorable sports broadcaster if I didn't discuss the game and this edition of the game that was absolutely significant for the University of Michigan, for Jim Harbaugh, and for college football. Because as much as I may loathe those two programs, it doesn't compare to the disdain that those two programs have for one another. And obviously, ever since Jim Harbaugh was hired as the new coach of Michigan, the discussion from day one, would he be able to finally beat Ohio State? That was the discussion from day one. And up until this weekend, he was 0-5. In fact, he was 3-4 and against Michigan State, which is all that people were clamoring about and arguing about. Wow, he can't beat his rivals. He can't beat his rivals, yada, yada, yada. He was 3-9 and nine against Michigan State and Ohio State entering this weekend. Fans, alumni, the boosters, no one cared about the fact that this guy had a consistent winning record in Michigan. All they cared about was, could they beat this one opponent? And this is a rivalry that dates back to 1897. In fact, they've played... They had played continuously from 1918 to 2020, uninterrupted. Every year, last year was the first exception because of COVID, and they had to cancel the game. But Jim Harbaugh was absolutely lambasted. Was His name was dragged through the, rut, through the mud, ridiculed, just crushed for his inability to win this one game. And I've always been of the mindset that I never thought that Jim Harbaugh was a failure at Michigan. I never thought that he wasn't living up to expectations. My thought process was Michigan is a program that obviously has a lot of respect, but they kind of have an inflated perception of what their program is and what the expectations of their programs, of their athletic programs should be. That's the reality. So the error has been on their inflated view of themselves. That's been the problem with Michigan. And I thought that since day one, he's come in and he's revitalized a program that was kind of decaying and he nourished it back to life. And he brought it back through his flair. And yes, he is pretentious. Yes, he is odd and he's quirky. Yes, he goes on extravagant and a bit gratuitous off-season trips and escapades with recruits and with his teammates to try and inspire them for the upcoming season. Yes, I know all of that is true. But the reality is the job that he had been doing was incredible at Michigan. He made them relevant once again. He returned them to relevancy which I think as hard as it was for Michigan fans to accept and appreciate, that was the reality. That's what he did. And and the fact of the matter is, even though Michigan was paying Jim Harbaugh all this money, and even though he ended up reworking and reconstructing his deal, I always thought it was a bit unrealistic and a bit unfair, to be honest, and unreasonable to expect Michigan in today's era to have beaten Ohio State because they didn't have as much talent. Even even this year, you can argue that Ohio State has always had more talent in the last two decades than Michigan. And so their recruits have been better. The recruiting class has been better. And in today's era, it was harder, in my opinion, to argue that Michigan is a richer football program than Ohio State. I know historically 
that is the case. I know historically Michigan holds a 59 to 51 and six advantage over Ohio State, and they've won 11 national titles as opposed to just eight for Ohio State. But most of those titles for Michigan came in like the in the in the first decade of the 1900s, and then sprinkled in there in the 50s, in the 70s, and in the 80s. If you look at the 2000s, because 1997 was the last time that Michigan won the national title, that was the year that I was born, 24 years ago, nearly 25 years ago. And I'm not going to necessarily claim that I'm a sports historian, though I'm trying to be, but that's a long time. That's a long time. In the 2000s, Ohio State has won two national titles. They have won 11 Big Ten championships. They've reached the college football playoff four times. And of those 10 or 11 Big Ten championships in 2011, 2011 is when the Big Ten actually created divisions in that conference. Ohio State had won the Big Ten division 10 for 10 years. And in 2014, when they divided the divisions into two geographical divisions, the East, the East Division and the West Division. Ohio State entering this year had won the Big Ten East Division seven years in a row. And in fact, they were 17 and three against Michigan over the last 20 meetings this century. So the argument was clearly in the favor of Ohio State for recruits. History was in recent history, at least was always in favor of Ohio State against Michigan when it came to recruiting. So it always my it was always mind-boggling to me how disappointed fans and media experts would be when Michigan didn't have as much talent as Ohio State despite the fact that the athletic department was paying him a boatload of money. Yeah, that's going to happen. That's going to happen, but that's the only way to turn around a struggling program to relevancy. And I thought that Jim Harbaugh had done that. And you look at his record again, 10 and 3 in 2015, 10 and 3 in 2016. He was 8 and 5 in 2017. Okay, fine. 10 and 3 again in 2018, 9 and, 9 and 4 in 2019. Last year was an aberration, and he's 11 and 1 in this year. And if you really analyze the matchups against Ohio State, there were only two times other than this weekend where you could say they probably should have won. In 2016, that was one of the best college football games that I've seen. Ohio State was number two. Michigan was number three in his second season as the head coach at Michigan. They played on the road in Columbus at the shoe. And that was a game that Ohio State somehow, by hook or by crook, pulled out a 30 to 27 double overtime win, a game that featured perhaps one of the worst spotted calls that we've ever seen by refs. On a fourth and one, the refs gave JT Barrett the first down when clearly he was a little bit short of the line to gain. So that would have been Jim Harbaugh's first victory as a head coach. Again, I can't believe I'm having to argue on behalf of this guy. I'm a Wisconsin fan. I hate both of these damn schools, but that's the reality of the situation is he's been improperly maligned, in my opinion. So so that's 2016, a year that he should have won. He's collected his first victory against Ohio State. The only other year where you could argue maybe, maybe Michigan had more talent was in 2018 when it was the first year Jim Harbaugh had Shea Patterson as his heralded transfer quarterback from Ole Miss. When they were ranked number four, they went to the shoe again. Ohio State was ranked number 10, and Michigan's defense was spectacular. That was a defense that featured Devin Bush, Rashawn Gary, Chase Winovich, Kalike Hudson. A stout defense. Their secondary was phenomenal, and they got the doors blown off them 62. They got boat race 62 to 39. Okay, maybe that's the one year where in the six previous matchups you're saying to yourself, Michigan probably was the better team that year, and they came up short. But Jim Harbaugh's been knocking on the college football playoff door for years, and this was the first time since he's been the head coach against Ohio State where we saw that Michigan was the much more physical team. They dominated up front. Defensively, they're off their defensive line and offensively, their offensive line, they dominated the line to scrimmage. They controlled the ball. They ran the ball down the throat of the Ohio, of Ohio State with the ground and pound game. 
Hassan Haskins, 165 rushing yards. Michigan as a team rushed for 297 rushing yards. 297 rushing yards against Ohio State. They just bullied them. They just beat them down. They wore them down, which was something that we had yet to see from Michigan against Ohio State. And, and that's that's what's allowed them to succeed this year. It hasn't been the passing game. It hasn't been the quarterback play. Cade McNamara is not anything special, but he's done just enough. He's made a couple big throws, and they've been riding the backs of Haskins, who's been carrying them throughout this season. He's rushed for over 150 yards in three of his last four games. So that's been the difference. And this was the first time in this rivalry since Jim Harbaugh has been the head coach in this rivalry where we saw Michigan exert their will on Ohio State. That had never been the case before. Aiden Hutchinson, three sacks, three tackles for loss, was a menace defensively. He actually played in that 2018 loss to Ohio State, so he's very familiar with the rivalry. And... I just think that for the magnitude of the program and of college football, this is huge because I think that when the next college football playoff rankings come out, Michigan is going to be ranked number two. They're probably going to leapfrog Alabama and Cincinnati. And Jim Harbaugh deserves a lot of credit. He deserves a lot of credit because this was a year that, again, he pulled up, pulled off the upset 42 to 27. There were some doubts as to whether or not he could actually get the job done. If not this year, then when? If not now, when? It was snowing. It was inclement weather. Ann Arbor was rocking. It was a great atmosphere and a great time for a victory. Now, all of that, of course, will be for naught if they can't reach the college football playoff. If they lose to Iowa in the Big Ten championship game, I'm sure that that you know opponents are going to have snarky remarks for him if he loses to Iowa and totally discount the win against Ohio State, but we'll cross that bridge when it happens. But a major, major win for Michigan, major win for Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines. Huge, huge victory against Ohio State.